So this question asks us to determine the force in each member of the truss and state if the members are in tension or compression. So the most appropriate solution method for this is probably to do method of joints, um, simply because we need to find out the force in every single uh, member. Um, you can of course use method of sections, but you're going to have to take a few cuts to get all the different um, numbers that you're interested in. So I'm going to try a method of joints, and the first thing I'm going to do for it is to draw my free body diagram. So let's quickly draw this in. So we have a few externally applied forces that we need to transfer on. And two up here. And we're going to need to disconnect from our supports. So at C we have a roller support, so that's going to react perpendicular to the surface. So I'll guess it's going this way, call it CX. And down here we're going to have a pin joint, and we know that pins um, react in the horizontal and the vertical direction. So it's going to have both of them. Call this one AX and this one AY. Alright, so now we're up to the point where we can start to try and solve for some of these forces. So I'm just going to quickly pop on the name of all of our um, joints. And we're going to try and pick to do uh, solve this in a method that makes our life easier. So what that means is we want to pick joints where we have no more than two unknowns um, that we're going to be looking at. Because we only have two equilibrium equations we can apply. Some are forces in the x direction and some are forces in the y direction. Sum of moments is not useful to us when we're doing method of joints because everything is acting through the same point. So you're just going to get zero equals zero when you sum your moments. So I think a good one to start with is probably joint D here, um, simply because we're only going to have the two unknowns um, in these two members to deal with. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram at joint D. So we have the two external forces of 300 and 400. And we're going to have forces through a horizontal and a vertical member. Now we can pretty much um, guess what direction these are going to be in. Um, so this one's pointing to the right, this one's going to have to react back the other way, and this one's pointing down, so we're going to have to react back up to counteract it. So let's label these. This is FCD, and this one's AD. So if we sum our forces in the x direction to be 0, we're going to get that 400 has to be equal to FCD. And when we sum in the y direction, we're going to get that FAD has to counteract against this 300 because they're the only things in the y direction. All right, so now we need to tell um, or report the tension or compression in each of the members. So FCD, the way we've drawn this, we've got our force pointing onto the um, joint. That represents a compression member. So I'll put C on the end here. We have the same case with FAD, it's pushing onto the joint, so that means it's also going to be a compression member. So that's our first two answers. So we can go back and label these um, ones we've just found on our diagram over here. So FCD, we said was pushing on the joint, so it's in compression. So it's remember they're two force members, so you have to make sure you put both forces on. Both of them are pushing onto the joint. And it's going to be um, 400 newts. And for AD, again, it was compression, so they're pushing onto the joint, and it's 300 newtons. All right, so now we need to pick another spot to have a look at. Um, I think the next easiest one to pick would probably be B, um, but you could, of course, pick C as well, because um, you should only have the... Oh no, actually, see you have too many unknowns. You only know 400 newtons pushing onto it here. You don't know the force in this member, this member, or the reaction. So that's a bad choice as well. So this one is the only one that we can kind of solve next. So let's go with that. All right, so we've got these external ones. And we've got a vertical and a horizontal member that are going to apply forces. And again, we can pretty much be pick up the direction straight away. So if this one is pointing to the right, this one's going to have to be back to the left. So that's AB. 
And if this one is pointing down, this one's going to have to point up to counteract it, and that's going to be BC. So again, if we apply our equilibrium equations, if we sum in the x direction, of course, this one is going to have to equal 250. And if we sum in the y direction, FBC is going to have to be 200. So now we need to think about the direction, um, or I should say the compression or tension of the member. So FBC is pulling away from the joint. So this represents a tension member. Same thing with FAB, it's pulling away, so it's going to be in tension. So there's another two answers. So if we come back over here, we can label it on our diagram. So we've said that um, BC is in tension, so it's pulling away from the joint. Let's make that a bit neater. And it's 200. This one as well was in tension, so it's pulling away, and it's 250. All right, so the only other one that we need is this um, diagonal member, and we can get it from looking at um, joint C, I think, is the next choice. So if we look at this joint, we only have the member that we need to determine and the reaction as the two unknowns. Um, alternatively, if you tried to look at point A, though, you currently don't know AX, AY, or the member, so that's three unknowns. That's too many to solve it directly. So good decision is to go with C. All right, so on this joint, we have this CX that we don't know. Now, I've just guessed a direction for it at the moment. We have this 200. We know that's going down. We have the 400 newtons, and on this end, it's pushing onto the joint, so it goes to the right. And we've also got to consider this um, force through the member. And I'm going to take a stab at its direction. Now, since this is pointing down, I'm going to guess that this one has to point back up, and I'm going to call it FAC. And of course, if you get the direction wrong, it just ends up being a negative when you solve your equilibrium equation, and you can swap over the direction of the arrow. All right, so I'm going to sum my forces. Now, I'm only really interested in this. It didn't ask us to find the support reaction, so I'm not going to um, bother with that. So, But if I sum the y direction to be 0, the only unknown should be FAC, and I should be able to determine it. Um, one thing I left off, sorry, was the angle that FAC was um, at. But from up here, when we look at our diagram, we can see that we've got an angle of, it's going to have to be 45 degrees in here, because it's a 2 by 2 meter um, triangle, I guess. So that's a 45 degree angle. Since it's a two force member, it's going to be at 45 degrees as well for the force. So the y component is going to be FAC sine 45, and it's going up, so I leave it as positive. And this is going down, so it's going to be minus 200, and this has to be equal to 0. So FAC is going to have to be 200 on sine 45, and you can calculate this to be about 283 newtons. So we just need to then think about whether this is in compression or tension. So since this came out positive, we have the correct direction on the diagram, and it's pushing onto the joint, so that's going to represent a compression member. So FAC is 283 newtons in compression. So just to conclude the diagram back up here, we can put that on. So it's compression and 283. All right, so that's the, the final answer for the question. We've labeled all of our different members. Um, it didn't ask us to find what the support reactions were, so CX, AY, and AX. But of course, if you wanted to, um, you could absolutely do it. Um, again, it would just be a case of picking out what's happening at the joint. Um, so we've already got F, uh, sorry, CX could be solved off this diagram here. If you drew the joint down here, you would be able to get AX and AY. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you can go back to the big free body diagram, and if you wanted to, you could sum moments about point A, and that would give you CX, sorry, here. Or if you sum in X and Y direction as well, um, you should be able to get CX and AY and whatever, all of them from that method. So that's all there is for this question, and I've got a few other examples that you can look at.